Not the same place that I know, not the same place that you know. And this is where we are right now. I have a Trump-hating judge with a Trump-hating wife and family whose daughter worked for Kamala Harris and now receives money from the Biden-Harris campaign and a lot of it. I think this Trump indictment might give him more votes in the black community, in particular with black men. So everyone, unless you've been under a rock, knows that Donald Trump was indicted yesterday, actually Monday, and went to court yesterday in New York for some charges that even federal prosecutors would not pursue or prosecute. But yet, the Attorney General, D.A. Bragg, who's probably being gassed up by the Democrats. Are they going to convict Donald Trump? I'm the candidate in the race who has the experience with, with Donald Trump. I was the chief deputy in the attorney general's office. We sued the Trump administration over a hundred times uh, for the Muslim travel ban, for family separation at the border, for shen shenanigans with the census. Uh, so I know how to, to litigate uh, with him. I also led the team that did the Trump Foundation case. So uh, I'm ready to go wherever the facts take me and to inherit that case. And I think, you know, it'd be hard to argue with the fact that that's, that'd be the most important, uh, most high profile case uh, and I've seen him up front and seen the lawlessness that he can do. And What's, you believe it should happen? I, you know, I, I, be, I believe we have to hold him accountable. So, uh, so yeah, th th there, there, you are right. We got a, two standards of justice. You know, Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, being a rich old white man has allowed you to fade accountability in Manhattan. That includes Trump and his children. So I've I seen think. a pattern of lawlessness over 20 years. Uh, and so I'm inclined to believe all I see in the public domain uh, and know that there's uh, and believe that there's a path forward there to make a case. In particular, probably Joe Biden or some of the woke progressive left to cause Trump, to prevent Trump from running in 2024 and getting a nomination as a Republican. But what they don't understand, and this is just me talking, and for full disclosure, I haven't been the staunchest Donald Trump fan. And as a biblical conservative, I look at things based on a biblical perspective, even though I did vote for Trump, full disclosure, I voted for Trump because he was the better choice between the last two candidates that were running against him. Nevertheless, I think, I think that because of how he's being treated by the system, the criminal justice system, more black men will vote for him. As you can see in that poll, Trump is leading amongst people of color. And I bet you if you dig deeper into those numbers, he's leading by an overwhelming amount with black men because black men, for the most part, have been harmed the most by this criminal justice system, by this system that is not equal and is not just. And so therefore, when they see Trump, and even though they may have been told by their mothers, been told by their girlfriends, been told by their wives that Trump is racist, that Trump is a misogynist, that Trump is horrible, they see that this is unjust. This is injustice taking place to this man. Even Van Jones has seen it. He looks sad. Yeah, he looks sad. Uh, he looks like um, uh, the weight of it's hitting him. And you know, uh, just as a human being, like, I don't, I don't take, I don't take joy. I don't like the prison system. I don't like what it does to people. I don't like this process. So I don't take any celebration in seeing uh, him looking that way. He looks sad now. Doesn't mean that he, accountability is not owed. We don't know what he's going to be charged with. There's a, there's a lot more, but at that moment, that is not a conqueror. Uh, that is a, a granddad having a very bad day. And you know, if you say anything positive about Trump as a black man, you get labeled certain things like the political Don King. He called Van Jones and Tim Scott and Maggie Habermans. And Maggie Habermans, a New York Times reporter, and she has the inroads with Trump. But nevertheless, you get these kind of comments directed towards people who even have an honest opinion of what's going on, an honest opinion of what's going on. And things like this, I believe is going to backfire on the Democratic Party because they're already losing support amongst black men and people of color in general. I mean, just look at the last couple of elections. Their support has been eroding. Why do you think they're pushing so much for the LGBTQ? Hmm, why do you think they're pushing so much for black women? Hmm, 
It's because they're losing their support with Hispanics because Hispanics and black people for the most part are conservative and they believe in traditional biblical values. And so when you promote values that are antithetical and anathema to those, you're gonna lose support. So what do they have to do? They have to drudge up support with the LGBTQ community. And I think black people are wise enough to that. Like, hold up, all these things you're pushing are not for the black community. Every single thing they've pushed, if you notice, everything they pushed has either benefited the LGBTQ or benefited the elites. I mean, how many black people, in particular black men, would benefit from having student loans forgiven? Not many. Not as many as black women or white feminists or elites. Let's be real about that. And who has affirmative action benefited the most? Oh, let me guess white liberal women. So when you take all of these things into play, when you evaluate all of these things, you start to see why I believe more black men will vote for Trump as a result of this indictment, because they will know that, hey, even though, and, and, and keep in mind, before Trump was even president, he had an overwhelming amount of support amongst black male celebrities, rappers, entertainers, all those guys wanted to be cozied up with Trump and take photos. You think that has gone away? No, that hasn't gone away. Those people still like Trump, but because they wanna be invited to the cookout, they have to say publicly that they don't. But you know, good and well, if those people were given truth, sir, they will vote for Trump hands down over Joe Biden. Have you seen what's happened to America since Joe Biden's been in office? Have you seen what's happened to our children since Joe Biden's been in office? Have you seen what's happened to our schools since Joe Biden's been in office? And you mean to tell me that you don't think some black men in particular are gonna vote for Trump? Please. That's why I think this indictment will backfire on him because this indictment is trying to make Donald Trump a victim. It is. And I'm not a victim. I don't think he's a victim and we're not victims. That's why I think this thing's gonna backfire. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I think the trend is heading that way that Trump will eventually get the nomination and he will eventually be president again. Despite all the personality traits that even I disagree with, the fact that that man has been subjected to the same unfair treatment that a lot of black men have been subjected to by the criminal justice system generates an affinity and a sympathy with them.